switch on the circuit and make electricity flow from the power pack onto the capacitors by pushing that switch and then we can discharge the electricity from the capacitors through this light bulb. And so the purpose of the light bulbs is just to help us visualise what's happening with the charge as, as things progress. So are you recording kind of? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, so what we're going to do to start with is charge. So watch this voltmeter, which shows us the voltage across the light bulb. Voltage across the light bulb is sort of a measure of how much current is flowing through the circuit. So when the voltage is high, that means the current must be high. When the voltage is low, the current must be low. We'll also see that like very visually with the light bulb for a microsecond. And then this voltmeter here is showing us the voltage on the capacitors. So at the moment, zero volts on the capacitors and no current flowing. And then as we push the charge button, for a moment, the light bulb flashed and we can see that this voltage here, as we're charging it, is now sitting up there on 12 volts. And when we stop charging it, it just sits there quite happily on 12 volts until we push the other button that's going to discharge the capacitors through this light bulb here. Hopefully what we could see is that at first the at first when we charged it, it goes right from zero up to maximum brightness and then it dulls down to zero. So when we start to charge the empty capacitors, initially current flow is really high. There's no voltage across these at all. But then as this voltage builds up, this voltage here decreases. You can see those two things kind of happening together with each other. And then once we let that voltage flow out through this light bulb. This voltmeter here is showing us both the voltage across these capacitors and the voltage across this light bulb. And so we can see that it should move really fast at first and then slower and slower as the voltage goes down towards zero. And on a nice analog voltmeter like this, it looks like that voltage does really get to zero. In reality, it takes an infinitely long time for those last few electrons to flow off the plates and so the voltage forms an asymptote with zero and it forms an asymptote with the charging voltage. It never quite actually gets there but what we're seeing is that it happens fast at first and then slower and slower and slower. Fast at first, slower and slower and slower. Does that sort of make... You're seeing what's happening there? It happens quite quickly, eh? I could find some bigger resistors to make it happen slower. That's going to be... Recorded currently. <laughs> <laughs> so RC circuits, right? RC circuits. And charging is what we're looking at. So we've just got a resistor in series with an uncharged capacitor. So what we know is going to happen at the instant we close that circuit, the capacitor's uncharged, so it's got no voltage on it. And so at the instant we close the switch, the circuit current jumps up to I equals V upon R, and all of the supply voltage is seen across the resistor. But then as that current flows through and onto the capacitor plates, the capacitor voltage is going to increase. And as this voltage increases, this voltage has to decrease because the resistor and the capacitor voltage have to add up to the supply voltage. And eventually, after a long time, the capacitor voltage is going to be equal to the supply voltage. That means no current is going to flow, and therefore the resistor voltage is going to be zero. And so what we're looking at is plotting out what happens from T0 when the switch is closed. So we'll do capacitor blue, resistor red. Both of them before the switch is closed. Squeaky. On zero. What one are we going to do first? 
read it. Resistor. Okay. So the resistor voltage at T0 jumps up to the supply voltage and then decreases to make an asymptote with zero. It never quite gets to zero because the capacitor never quite gets fully charged, but it forms an asymptote with zero. And then because we know that those two voltages, the resistor and the capacitor, have to add together to make the supply voltage, hopefully we can spot that the capacitor voltage must do something like that, so that at any instant, the red curve and the blue curve add to give us the supply voltage, which is that dotty constant line up the top there. And both of them, you'll notice, are forming asymptotes with zero volts in the case of the resistor or the supply voltage in the case of the capacitor. Asymptotes are really annoying, like it takes an infinite amount of time for the resistor voltage to reach zero, and it takes an infinite amount of time for the capacitor voltage to reach the supply voltage. But we know in reality that that's not really useful, and it's not really accurate. Like, we get close enough to say we're there much before an infinite amount of time has elapsed. And so, what's useful on these circuits is to talk about the time it takes for the voltage to change by 63% of its original amount. And so, we're going to be interested in the time that it takes for, say, the capacitor voltage to go up by 63%. And the reason we are interested in 63% is that this time here, we're going to give it a special symbol, tor, the same as torque, and we can calculate how long it takes for the capacitor get, to get up to 63% of its original value. That time is equal to the resistance times by the capacitance. So that's kind of useful. We can calculate exactly the time it's going to take to get from 0 volts up to 63% of whatever the supply voltage is, just by multiplying the resistance by the capacitance. And it kind of makes sense if we think about, like, why does having a bigger resistor make it take longer to get there? Bigger resistor means less current flow, so it's going to take more time for the charge to build up on the capacitor plates. And why does making a bigger capacitor make it take longer to get to 63%? Well, it's like, it's a bigger bucket that you're trying to fill with charge. If you've got a much bigger bucket, then it's going to take longer with the same current flow to fill it up. And so it makes sense when we think about it that a bigger resistor and a bigger capacitor will both mean it takes longer to get to 63% of full charge or, or it could be the time it takes equivalently for the resistor voltage to drop by 63%, in other words to get down to 37% of its total value. Happy with that? So the time constant is that amount of time then from the instant the switch was closed up until the point that the capacitor reaches 67, sorry, 63 percent of the supply voltage and the time that it takes for the resistor to drop to 37 percent. Should we do discharging? So same circuit, right? Just that if the switch is in position A, it's that circuit, and if the switch is in position B, it effectively disconnects the supply. We've just got the capacitor. Happy with that? So when we move that switch from position A to position B, what do we know about the direction that the current's going to flow in compared to the direction it was flowing in originally? Originally we were pushing current around through the resistor onto the capacitor plates, but if we 
we move the switch from A down to B so that it can flow down here. It kind of makes sense that it's going to push backwards through the resistor and flow around the circuit that way to bring the capacitor back to being uncharged again. Eh? And so as that happens, what's going to happen to the capacitor voltage as it loses charge? It's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. We're going to get exactly the same decrease that we had before. Beautiful little asymptote with zero. And we know that voltages around a closed loop have to add to zero. And that means that the resistor voltage has to be exactly the opposite of what the capacitor voltage is. And that makes sense that the resistor voltage is going to go negative because the current's flying the opposite direction through the resistor. And so it's going to jump from there to there. Make a curve something like that with another asymptote at zero. So at any instant, the capacitor voltage is the resistor voltage. How's that switch drawn? And so, once again, the time it takes for a 63% change is equal to the time constant of the circuit, Tor. So Tor is still just equal to RC. And it's the same for the resistor voltage. The time it takes for the resistor voltage to change by 63%, or to reach, obviously, 37% of Vs is the same as the capacitor. Kind of feels weird that we can so so towards the time constant measured in seconds as the circuit resistance and ohms and sees the capacitance measured in farads and it kind of feels weird that we should be able to multiply ohms by farads seconds that doesn't it's not a very intuitive thing to be able to do.